Hi everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Is It Called Wine Time? Uh, with Pete and Felix. Here we are again. What a surprise. What a surprise. Uh, we thought today we'd have a look at, uh, rather than a single producer, we'd look at a specific variety. Uh, in particular, Cab Franc. Um, I think Cab Franc's pretty overlooked. Yeah, really. definitely. Yeah. We it's... find that people, when they try it in store, it seems to be the thing they keep going back for. Yeah. Um, especially in the cooler months. It's really had a bit of a resurgence lately. Absolutely. In store. So it's the kind of thing that is worth uh, drawing attention to. Yep, totally. And yeah, and I thought, you know, we'd have a look at a couple. We've got uh, an Australian version and then uh, one from the Loire Valley, which, of course, is now, I guess, considered to be the, the kind of modern home of uh, Cab Franc. Originally, I think it came from Bordeaux, or at least the southwest in France, uh, and they're still widely planted in Bordeaux, but yeah. usually used as a blend. I don't think they make straight Cab Franc. Yeah, uh, I mean, with the stuff that we get in the shop, like the single or straight varietal Cab Francs tend to be from the Loire. Yeah, yeah. And um, it tends to be the kind of thing that we're enjoying most. We don't yeah, definitely. have a lot of the Bordeaux monies. <laughs> we don't have a lot of the Bordeaux monies. No. Interestingly, though, uh, I read the other day that... Uh, speaking of Bordeaux, Chateau Cheval Blanc, uh, which is obviously one of the most uh, kind of acclaimed and prestigious uh, houses in uh, Bordeaux, is two thirds Cab Franc and one third Merlot. So there you go. That's what they use in their blend. But uh, on to the wines. Um, yeah, we'll start with the Aussie one. Um, so this little FRNC, I think, which is short for Franc, mm, Franc. Uh, is from uh, one of our favourite winemakers, Brash Higgins, or Brad Hickey, as his name is. Um, McLaren Vale Fruit. Um, it's from a single vineyard, uh, which he himself uh, doesn't farm, but he buys the fruit in. He works quite closely with this particular grower. Um, it's from uh, Cro Antonio Lamento. And uh, it's, yeah, I've, I've had this one before, so I'm quite keen to have a look at it again. But uh, I think this is a great example of a new world Cab Franc. Um, yeah, so let's, let's have a look. It's, um, so as many of you will know, Cab Franc is the parent of, one of the parents of Cab Sav. Uh, Cab Franc and Sauvignon Blanc had a baby and that's Cab Sav. Um, cute. Cute. Uh, Cab Franc is also, I didn't realize this until recently, Cab Franc is also the parent of Merlot, or one of the parents of Merlot, uh, and Carmenere for that matter those of you who are interested in Chilean wines. Yeah, right. okay. So Franc is really one of the oldest grape varieties that, uh, that's that been planted and has kind of crossed with so many other things mm. to create different um, subspecies and different, uh, what do you call it, strains, I guess, of, of grapes. Yeah, it sounds like a bit of a super spreader. A super, super spreader. Mm. That's a term that we use. Yeah, I got the corona jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's going to date. People will look at this back in 20 years and go, what is he talking about? Super spreader. Coronavirus. still looking yeah. at me in 20 years. <laughs> it's fine. Um, but to the wine. So one of the things I love about Franc compared to its its baby Cab Sav is it's a lot more floral. Um, it still has those same sort of classic kind of black currant cassis notes. Um, you still get a lot of the um, uh, leafy kind of capsicum edge to it as well. Yeah, although this doesn't seem it's too not green particularly at green. All. No, no, no. This is definitely those black, blue, red fruits. Yeah, black currant cassis for sure. Like, Plenty of floral is there as, yeah. it, as well. Yeah, which gives it a real lift. Yeah, it's, I get a sort of like um, a violet tone, you know, that sort of fresh but kind yeah. of um, violet. I've had not this one. I, sorry, I've not had this wine in so long. Um, I think the last time I looked at it was when Brad was on the road. And that was probably oh, over a year ago. That was ago. a while ago. Yeah. So Corona we, jokes again. Uh, no one comes to visit us these days. That's yeah. That's why we're stuck in this dank cellar. So, yeah. could be worse. Look, I'm used to it. <laughs> um, on the palate, let's have a look. Great nose, though. Mm. This was worth doing. That's yeah, cool. Mm. Oh, absolutely beautiful. You get this mm. burst of kind of um, almost like a raspberry coolie. Um, there's there's kind of bright red fruit there. Um, a little a little touch of kind of peppery spice. Um, a really faint spice. Yeah. Really faint. There's much more primary fruit. Yeah, it's, it's all about the fruit. And I, I get this um, on That's the finish as well. You get a nice kind of integrated oak note as well. Um, obviously, this has seen some wood. Uh, da, da, da. Yes, there you go. 12 months in French oak. So that's definitely coming through as well. But um, I think the hero here is Cab Franc. I mean, you get those beautiful bright red and black kind of fruits. Yeah, um, yeah really, really good. Really nicely shaped. Um, yeah, if you guys, if, if 
you're new to Cap Franc or you haven't tried it before or you want to kind of dip your toe in the water and see what it's all about, yeah. um, this is a great example. It's not too expensive, it's 35 on the shelf, I want to say, single bottle, less in uh, a six pack. Um, yeah, so it's not gonna, fun. yeah, it's not gonna break the bank. Um, a really great, great way to uh, experience Cab Franc without kind of going high end or into the Loire or you know Bordeaux blend or something like that. Um, yeah, Br brilliant, brilliant. It's honestly much lighter than I thought it was gonna be. Even yeah, from the color, I figured it was gonna light. be. Yeah, no, but I, even from the weight and the style and the Crown Veil, I'm thinking it's still gonna be a little bit more. Weightier than heavy, this yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think this it's, is this is really quite light on its feet. This is it cool. Comes in at thirteen point nine, so I'd say 14 percent. Mm -hmm. So look, it is. It's I, I guess up there in terms of the full bodied red, but it's certainly, as Pete said, very light on its feet. Uh, it doesn't weigh you down, like you know. Um, I guess what I'm guessing you're getting at is the absence of tannin. Hmm. Because even so, even it, it does have a higher percentage of alcohol. It's not. Not aggressively tannic wine by any means. They're very the tannins are there, but they're very fine. Mm. They're not. It's not grippy like you would yeah. expect a cab. It's just like giving it to structure. Be. And exactly. It, it, gives it, it gives it shape. Yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. And a little bit of um, kind of flow, but yeah, really, really nice. I um I didn't realize you hadn't tried that in a while. No, it's been ages. Yeah. Um, I really I love his wines. We the um Brad's wines or the Brash Higgins label. Uh, we stock a lot of. We think mm. across the board they're fantastic. Yeah. American um, used to be a song in New York, moved out of McLaren Vale, this whole love story attached to it, which is beautiful. <laughs> but songs tend to make pretty good wines in my experience. Mm. Like they, they've, they've got a really well-trained palate and at least have a good lens on what they want from the variety. And yeah, this is... Yum. That's delicious. That. Yeah, it's cool. Well, now let's uh, journey back to the old <laughs> world, to the, uh, to the mother country. Um, we're going back to France here, so this is um, Mother France. Mother France. Yes, okay. um, we're going with that. Pierre, Chateau Pierre Bis um, from Anjou in the Loire Valley. Um, this is a more of a kind of uh, traditional Loire Cab Franc. Mm. Um, they one of the things that I love about Cab Franc is that that it, it can range in style from from the lighter. You know, we've got one here from Rising Vineyards from the Yarra Valley, which is almost like a risotto. It's really pale, yeah, it's super light, very really crunchy. very pretty, crunchy fruit. No any of the extraction that these guys have. And then yeah, and then it can go right through to those fuller body styles though, and they're the really kind of rich, dark, warmer kind of yeah. wines and everything in between. So it's a really versatile grape, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is fantastic. It gives everyone a kind of a, something that they can find that they like. Uh, so. Yeah, I don't know a lot about Pierre Bees, um, apart from they're a pretty classic uh, Loire producer. They do yeah. Cap Franc. Cap Franc, the Gamay. Gamay is really, really enjoyable. They d they definitely seem to be more of a rustic old school style of production, but at a really, really smart price point. So that's like $38. Yeah, um, yeah. We've tried to keep it kind of moderate here rather than kind of blowing right out because it can. Yeah. Some of the, some Cap Francs, particularly from the Loire, can get quite expensive. Yeah, Clos Richard. <laughs> Clos Rajard is one. Yeah, yeah it's a major collier. Yeah, uh, even Gibato, which is like in the 70s. Yeah, yeah and that's the Sommer Rouge. So the, the Gibato actual like single vineyard. Crew yeah, single yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. gets a lot more expensive yeah. than that. For good reason, because they're held in a similar esteem to things like Clos Rajard and collier and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> which I love the last ones. But instantly, so let's let's talk about the difference between these two. So this one is a lot more savoury, straight yeah. up. It's um, you get the whole like vitamin. Kind yeah, of vitamin it's C. it's got a kind of uh, really. Um, this is when you can actually call something mineral. Yeah, mineral a mineral edge, I yeah. guess. Yeah, it's I something like try this... to avoid that term because it means nothing. But sometimes it's so obvious. <laughs> it's very yeah. Yeah, I, I would say like you know people often talk about Cab Franc as having a graphite kind of aroma, and I think that yeah. definitely is in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Compared to the, the Brash Higgins, um, which was very primary, lifted floral, this is earthy, savoury, uh, yeah, mineral. It's a little bit more kind of rustic, I suppose, as you said. Yeah, um, yeah it's... Yeah, it's way more savoury. There is fruit, but it's much it's more... It's much hidden. darker as yeah. well. It's darker fruit. This was sort of red into blue, maybe a touch of black. This is quite yeah, dark fruit. Black, yeah, yeah I, I get sort of, you know, black olive and that kind of thing on there. Um, yeah, right. There is a bit of a tapenade thing happening. Yeah, interesting. Mm. Way more tannin. Heaps more structure. Heaps yeah. more grip. Um, God, still that really beautiful good. burst of primary fruit, though, doesn't it? Like, yeah. I thought from the nose, I expected. Um, 
I guess something a lot more savoury, but it, it has this yeah. really kind of bright, yeah, burst of kind of, um, I guess like almost like plum, blackberry. Uh, yeah, plum was kind of hiding on the nose. Yeah. And on the palate, it's definitely much more obvious. I feel like this is going to be one of those ones where it's a classic case of it needs some time to open up and mm. have the fruit come. But at least from what you get on the nose, it's very enjoyable. And it, it, Absolutely. it's ready to drink. Yeah, 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 yeah. The experience isn't like, oh, it's tight and closed. So and I, I really love that tannin structure. I mean, it is, it's a lot grippier than, than this one. This is yeah. a, a lighter, more kind of, I guess, dare I say, feminine style. Uh, this has got a lot of structure and a lot of kind of grip to it. The tannins are a lot more kind of chewy and, and pronounced. Mm. Um, and interestingly, I'm just noticing on the back of the bottle here, this is 15.5%. So that is, that's a big wine. You know, we're into Barossa Shiraz territory there. Um, but isn't that a bit lately? But interestingly... 15.5% stuff or like wines that have a higher alcohol volume. Yeah. Yeah, if they've actually made it well enough to have the booze tucked in... It's Yeah, it's not, it's not that a, noticeable. Yeah. I, I don't... It's not I, offensive for, at all. For me, the, the alcohol on this doesn't stick out. It doesn't... No. You know, often There's you have a... little a, bit of heat. Yeah, you get a heat. But... but but not like to the point. I like it. Yeah, and yeah. it's not it's not the point to the point where I don't think it's integrated. I think that's no. you know it's it's a really well put together wine, mm. um, and it's got enough enough structure and I guess heat, spice, and those black darker fruits that if you were doing this with like a, you know a a lamb braise mm. or even maybe like North African Moroccan kind of thing, sure would work really well. Yeah, yeah. Um, something that's a bit heartier and richer yeah and... they both they both seem like very very versatile food wines but I would almost go to this yeah for food whereas that you almost drink it yeah you, on you, your you own. could just <laughs> <laughs> yep absolutely but there you go so yeah um, two kind of very fleeting examples of, of Cab Franc there and of course as I said before uh, they range you know from really light through to right you know, really quite heavy, uh, and everything in between. Um, if you haven't come across Cab Franc, if you haven't tried it before, yeah. uh, I, I recommend that you come in and, and give some a go because it's an absolutely delicious wine, uh, and there will be something for everyone in this variety. Yeah, it's very enjoyable. Mm, very enjoyable. It's like a, it's a welcome departure from the lighter stuff that we've been drinking lately. We have been doing a lot of light stuff actually, and it's yeah. like it is cold at the moment. It's yeah, cold. this is. You know, you Actually want something really quite welcome. Yeah, you want something that's a bit warming and a bit richer. And mm. so, I mean, the heat from the you know, fifteen and a half percent. I'm down. Nice. <laughs> yes. Hello. Well, there you go. That's a little snapshot of Cab Franc. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it with us this time on. Is it called Wine Time? We'll be here same time, at the same place uh, next week with some more wines. Who knows what they'll be? Mm. Until then, see ya. Bye. Bye.